Ezekiel 45. Moreover, when ye shall divide by lot the land for inheritance, the land is going to be divided again, like in the time of Joshua. The length shall be the length of five and twenty thousand reeds, and the breadth shall be ten thousand. This shall be holy in all the borders thereof round about. So Joshua divided the land by lot, and then Jesus, in front of him, the land is going to be divided by lot. Of this there shall be for the sanctuary five hundred in length, with five hundred in breadth, square round about, and fifty cubits round about for the suburbs thereof. So there's a particular area spot for the temple. And of the measured shalt thou measure the length of five and twenty thousand, and the breadth of ten thousand, and it shall be the sanctuary and the most holy place. So there's a lot for the temple and the holy most holy place. The sanctuary is the tabernacle. The holy portion of the land shall be for the priests, the ministers of the sanctuary, which shall come near to minister unto the Lord, and it shall be a place for their houses. So they're going to build by the temple, and a holy place for the sanctuary. So those suburbs we read about are for the priests to live. And the five and twenty thousand of length, and the ten thousand of breadth, shall also the Levites, the ministers of the house, have for themselves for a possession for twenty chambers. Everything's exact. And ye shall appoint the possession of the city five thousand broad, five thousand twenty thousand long, over against the oblation of the holy portion, it shall be for the whole house of Israel. I guarantee these measurements are going to be exact. And they're going to be so. It won't be 21 chambers. It won't be 19 and 3 quarters chambers. It's going to be 20. This is all out of the word of God. And a portion shall be. You see there's much more yet to come by God. The prophecies that Jesus fulfilled in his first advent. Are mere. You've got prophecy of the rapture. You got prophecy of the seven year tribulation period. You got a prophecy of the three and a half year great tribulation, the last half of the tribulation period. You got a prophecy of the millennium. You got a prophecy of the judgments, the judgment seat of Christ, the judgment of nations, the great white throne judgment. You got a prophecy that when people die, they go to hell. You got a prophecy, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you go to glory. You got a prophecy that when I die, I'll be absent from this body and praise the Lord be with him. You got a prophecy, yet there's going to be a city called New Jerusalem. You got a prophecy, yet there'll be one day, there'll be no more tears. You've got a prophecy that it'll be a new body. If God can fulfill the 100% the prophecies of the first advent of the Lord Jesus Christ, be rest assured he's going to fulfill all these 100%. That's faith. I've never seen this building. I've never seen any of the temples. And then I believe just as much as Solomon's temple, that this temple here that's not even been built is going to be. And I'm going to be there to see it, according to the scriptures. Yet prophecy. So you don't need to worry about tongues and, and, and healings and all that. Think about what God has yet for us. I mean, this is for the Jews. Okay? But... As a born-again Bible-believing Christian that served the Lord, I hope I get a right to a reign of a city. I'm going to see this if I remain faithful unto death. I'm going to stand somewhere to see this building that I've just read about, that all these measurements are going to be there. And I don't need to check the measurements. I know they're going to be to what the Bible says. That's why you need to get away from modern Bibles. I know along what we write about this, I know things have been changed. And if you probably go buy a modern Bible, you probably look at that building and probably look like a, a, a uh, what's that little toy I used to play with there? The erection set. You know, full holes and may not fit. This is God speaking. 
This is something that's going to happen. It hasn't happened. Hebrews 11.1 1. And a portion shall be for the prince on the one side, and on the other side of the oblation of the holy portion, and of the possession of the city before the oblation of the holy portion, and before the possession of the city from the west side westward, and from the east side eastward. And the length shall be over against one of the portions from the west border unto the east border. That prince, I believe, is David. Jesus is king. How about that? Resurrection of David. Resurrection of Solomon. Elijah. We already read about Elijah and Moses. What about Elijah? In the land shall be his possession in Israel, the prince. And my princes, S, shall no more oppress my people. So what's God saying here? The leadership, the government, is oppressing the people. So what you think the United States government is doing to Christians and all that is nothing new. It's happening before Christ, about 574 uh, B.C. It's something that's happened from, from man's civilization and will happen to the Lord Jesus Christ takes over in the millennium as king. Your rulers, your people are going to oppress you. Even God's people. Live over it, get over it, live on, and go on for God. And the rest of the land shall they give to the house of Israel according to their tribes. What does James 1.1 1, 1 say? There are, skies, there, are, there are tribes that are scattered. They don't know who they are. There's coming a day of a national identity of who Israel is. You know there's coming a day of an identity of the Christian in the church? When the trump of God is blown and the dead in Christ rise first, and those that remain are caught up together in the clouds with those that have died. There will be no lost people there. It will be 100% saved individuals. It won't be like your church here on the earth. There are lost people in church. But at the rapture, all those that are saved, everyone else left behind. Here, Israel is going to get a national identity of who you are by the 12 sons of Jacob. You know how wonderful that will be for the Jews? Be as much as wonderful as there you are with all the saints, seeing Jesus afar as you're being drawn to him. That will be as remarkable as the Jews following him. I know who I am. You just can't read it. Oh, they're, they're going to know what tribe. That, that, that is a remarkable statement for the Jews to know that. And you know what they're also going to know? How many people out there proclaim to be Jewish and they're going to find out they're not Jews? Doesn't even one, was it one or two of the churches in, that John writes to in Revelation, they say that they were Jews and you found them to be liars? You know what a Jehovah Witness believes? He believes that God is not Jesus and Jesus is not God. You're going to find very rare Jehovah Witnesses at the rapture. I'm not saying they're all lost. But someone who proclaims to be of God and don't believe that his son is God, you're not going to be there. So as we'll find out who the true Christians are, and you may not even know. It would be a wonder if I found out my dad really got saved in a Sunday school. I don't know. But at the rapture, I will know. And somebody who I thought would say may not even be there. You're going to be surprised at the rapture like these Jews are going to be surprised. You're going to find people who are there that you didn't think were going to be there. You're going to find people who are not there that you thought were going to be there. And it's going to be 100% genuine, a pedigree of who you are and an identity. So this is what we're reading right here. Yet the future. This is, I, this, I don't know how to explain it because I can't explain the rapture. It's so wonderful. Who I am. 
Take somebody who, who doesn't know their parents and for whatever reason they, they were adopted. Whatever reason. Maybe there was good reason. There, there are good probably good reasons. Okay? Take the best good reason why you had to give your child up. You did it for the love of the child. Take that. Take that moment when they find out at an age that that's my mother and father. And they really love me. And you find out, you finally got an identity of who you are. And not only did you find out who your parents are, but they're willing to receive you. How's that? We are children of God. and We've been absent from God that day when we get to God. Here are the children of God, the Jews, and they don't even know who they are. You walk up to a Jew and if he says, oh, I'm of Reuben, or I'm of... Put him on the line and say, prove it. And I'll give you documented evidence about your Messiah that he can trace his roots all the way back to Adam, God. Well, that's, that's just written... That's in your Jewish records. A filed upon a tax day of the Roman government. Wouldn't it be funny if, if the taxes of the United States government or the worldwide government of the United Nations, maybe that would... Maybe that vent will get all the Christians together for us to be called up. You don't know. God used a tax day to record the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thus saith the Lord God, let it suffice you, O princes of Israel. Now he steps out of the realm of prophecy. and he steps in the realm of today. When I mean today, I mean Ezekiel's time. I'm reading as Ezekiel's writing this. Remove violence. That's why the temple's gone. God forsook Judah because of violence. And we read about that in either Jeremiah or Ezekiel. The word violence. We did a study on that. And spoil. Now what is spoil? That is something when armed troops come in, an army, and they defeat you, and they take anything they want. If the, if the Muslims came over right now and took over Daytona Beach and came in this house, and we had any riches or anything in their house they liked, and they took it, that would be spoiled. What on earth are the princes, the rulership of Israel, spoiling their own people? And yet, you know, I just read today, just by chance, a quinky dinky. I don't think it was God, but I think it's a quinky dinky. The IRS has now been given an authority they can take whatever they want. Isn't that a spoil? They have now, I read today, they've been given authority, whatever you call it, that they can now start taking possession. That's a spoil. And execute judgment and justice. Will you put in those lower courts honest and rightful judges that will judge? If you are guilty, you are guilty, and you'll be sentenced to the penalty of the law. If you are innocent, you are innocent. Besides how much money you got and who you are and what you are and where you are. That's not happening in America. This comedian has been has been charged in court. I just read today. Oh, certain counties not going to press charges against him. Why? Because of who he is? Come on, you can done better if the glove don't fit. You must have quit. Why are all the, the stars, and, and I mean, of movies and radio and, and mu uh, music, if you want to call it, why is it when they get charged with something such as DUI, they, get, they don't get a slap on the wrist? No, 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 listen, I'm all for it. You get somebody who commits DUI, and you know, they get jumped, fine. Why don't the celebrities get that? Then why does the media haunt them? And, oh, look at this great person. And execute judgment and justice. Judgment is standing before the court. There is no plea yet. You propose your your case as a plaintiff, as a defendant, before the judge. Then the justice is you guilty or innocent. Take away your exactions from my people, saith Lord God. 
Do you think Obama is doing? Look what these people are doing. Now, we're going to go back into the future, and we're going back into time. But the problem is, if you say time, where is Israel right now? They're in Babylon. They're in a Gentile nation. So I don't think what we're going to read now is for today for Ezekiel because they're going to go by Babylonian. Or it could be. But let's jump it off in the future. You shall have a just balance. No ripping anybody off. If it's one pound, it's one pound. You get paid for one pound. You take your fund off the scale. I was talking with my wife the other day. When you buy chicken or meat like that, she was carving a ham. You're paying for the bone that you're not going to eat. There's a thing called tear weight. You can't charge for the plastic uh, tray. Well, you're being charged for the bone. And they just EFA, and that's a Jewish weight. And your Bible will have some kind of notes. It's okay. But it's a Jewish weight. We are looking at Jewish measurements and a just bath. So no Epsom salt, no bath, you know, uh, bubble bath or anything. You just gotta have just just a bath. That's not what it means. It's again, it's a measurement. A bath will be a bath. An ephah will be an ephah. An ephah is in a bath, and the bath shall be one measure. Okay, so they're equal. That the bath may contain the tenth part of an homer. Okay, another Jewish measurement. So a bath better equals one tenth of a homer. It better. And in the millennium, it will. An ephah, the tenth part of a homer. So an ephah and a bath, like you said, they're the same. Of a homer, one's liquid, one's dry. But do you know something interesting here? What are the numbers here? Aren't they 10? Do you know what measurement system is not American that's based upon the number 10? Metric. If you go up 10 millimeters, you got, a, I think it's a centimeter. If you go 10 centimeters, you got another something meter. You go on that. The only oddball is American. Only America goes one tenth. And the shekel, this is money now. The weight shall be twenty girars, or giras, twenty shekels, five and twenty shekels, fifteen shekels shall be your many. I like to have many shekels. But this is all your quart let, let's put it down to American. Your quarter will be worth a quarter. Is that so in America? No. Your dollar is worth a certain amount of money according to the date of the money is worth amount of silver. Is it worth silver today? No. So you're being cheated by God's standards in America. God bless America. Don't you think that our government, the... Uh, the mint, the treasury, is going to be standing before God one day. Why we didn't get what we got. And with all this just bath and ephah, what about an employer? If he doesn't pay you what he should be paying you, what about the, the customer? If the customer does not get what he should be getting. Now, I just came to mind just thinking about because I work at a grocery store. When you see a can of green beans, I like green beans. And it says such amount weight of bean. Does that include the water? That would be something interesting. I'm going to try that sometime. Is that the weight of the beans or the water and the can? I know a preacher one time who, who took out a box of Cheerios, emptied it all out, and found it short of what the measurement was. And never bought a box of Cheerios, I, I understand. America, wake up! You're being shortchanged and you don't even know it. And that's not even the message. 
This is the oblation that ye shall offer. Okay? This is what you're going to offer. The sixth part of an ephah of a homer of wheat. So ephah is a dry measurement. Wheat. It's not wet. Ye shall give the sixth part of an ephah of homer of barley. So barley and wheat are the same as far as measurement, giving. Concerning the ordinance of oil, this is liquid, the bath of oil. Wouldn't that feel good? Bath is a liquid measurement. He shall offer the tenth part of a bath out of the core. Another measurement, which is a homer of ten baths. For ten baths are a homer. And if you hit the ball way out the old out field, that's a grand slam homer. And it could be maybe Gomer Pyle's cousin, Homer Pyle. I don't know. But these are Jewish measurements. Again, I read these things and I look at it like, I don't have anything when it comes to these kind of measurements and all that. I, don't, I can't. You can show me something 12 inches long and I've guessed 13, 14 inches. Right? All right. One lamb out of the flock. Out of 200, so one in 200, out of the fat pastures of Israel. So we're also told in the millennium, the pastures of Israel are going to be fat, green. That's what it means. For a meat offering, and for, for a burnt offering, and for a peace offering, no sin offering. To make reconciliation for them, saith the Lord God. All the people of the land shall give this oblation for the prince of it in Israel. So the prince is going to live by what you give him. And God is going to set the standard. And I'm not speaking about David right now. I'm just speaking in general. The prince will not live beyond his means like the United States government. If a city is given $1,000 to spend, they don't go over $1,000. You're in trouble. You know, it's called account, accountability. And she says, so there's nothing wrong. It's in the Bible that your leaders live by what you give them. You can call what we just read, it's called an oblation, it's called an offering. It can be called a tax. <clears throat> Hello? You can get up now. I'm sorry, I used that three-letter word there. You know, they need to live too. Those nice roads that you drive on didn't come by free. The electricity that came to your house, it costs money. Over money, but it costs money. And talk about measurements. You got eight guys on a job and one guy's doing a job. That's not a proper balance. And it shall be, in verse 16 too. When we talked about the pastor last night. If he does a service to Christians properly, he deserves to be fed by the people. And if he's not doing what God tells him, he's not doing what the Bible is, you ought to starve him out. You don't vote. You're, you've, you've got a guy who does not live the, by, by the Bible and is following Satan in the world. Just starve him out or leave the church and find another one. And if you don't find another one, start your own. And if you have a faithful preacher, feed him. And it shall be the prince's part to give burnt offering. Oh, so not only is the prince going to receive, he's also going to give. Does that sound like a preacher, a pastor of a church? He doesn't just sit back and rake in. He also gives out. To give burnt offerings and meat offerings and drink offerings 
in the feast. The feasts are coming back in the millennium. And with the pastor, as you serve him, he's to serve you. In the Lord, in the Bible, in the new moon. So it looks like in the millennium we're going to go to the lunar calendar. Not a Roman calendar named by Roman gods. I wonder if we're going to have new names for the Roman named planets. Doesn't the Bible say that God has named every star? So when you say 2015 AD, your calendar is all messed up because it came by a Roman false worshiper with orgies and all the kinds of things that believes that Jesus Christ was born on December 25th the same time as Baal who thinks he does a hocus pocus and Jesus turns into his meal it's where your calendar comes from and he's so stupid every few years you got to add another day just because you didn't do it right new moons is a lunar calendar and in the Sabbath. Are we in the Sabbath? No. So the Sabbath are later. So when Satan tells you and your church, honor the Sabbath, it's not now. You know, Satan has you do things that are right, but not the right time. There's nothing wrong with getting married. Nothing at all. God honors the marriage bed. But if you get married to the wrong person at the wrong time, There's nothing wrong being called to the ministry if you go before you're supposed to go. There's nothing wrong with having children. But if you have children out of wedlock, the Bible calls them bastards. Ooh. And you don't even know where that one is in the Bible, do you? And all solemnities of the house of Israel, he shall prepare the sin offering. The prince brings the sin offering. And the meat offering, and the burnt offering, and the peace offering, to make reconciliation for the house of Israel. That's the job of your pastor. Lord, these people just don't know what they're doing. These people are just... Now, he can't pray for your sins, but he can offer up to God that, you know, you need to work on that person. You need to work on that family. Lord, you need to intervene. You need to do something, Lord. And I'm offering up myself. I'm going to fast for that family. I'm going to fast for the congregation. I'm going to do something for those people, for that person, for you to be right with them. How's that? Am I wrong? Thus saith the Lord God, in the first month, in the first day of the month, thou shalt take a young bullock without blemish and cleanse the sanctuary. So, here's the thing for, for the first month, the first day, I'm not going to say the new year. That's Roman. The priest shall take of the blood of the sin offering and put it upon the post of the house and upon the four corners of the settle of the altar. We talked about that's that great area. And upon the post of the gate of the inner court. So thou shalt do the seventh day of the month for every one that erreth, and for him that is simple. So shall ye reconcile the house. Him that erreth, he had no idea. Him that simple, I have no idea what I'm doing. There's nothing in there about I wanted to do it. There's no room for, you know, those, those private secret sins that you do. No room for that. You want to be under the law? In the first month, in the 14th day of the month, I believe that was the Passover. Ye shall have the Passover. Funny how it's small p. A feast of seven days unleavened bread shall be eaten. The Passover and the feast of unleavened bread are together. Remember the night when they, they put the blood in the doorpost 
And then when they left Egypt, they grabbed their dough before it was leavened. So you're to remember, after all these years, you're to remember what happened in Exodus. That's never to be forgotten. You know, you're to remember the day you were saved and never forget. And upon the day shall the prince prepare for himself and for all the people of the land a bullet for a sin offering. And seven days of the feast he shall prepare the burnt offering to the Lord, seven bullocks and seven rams without blemish daily the seven days, and a kid of the goats daily for a sin offering. Is there goats and rams? No lamb. And he shall prepare a meat offering of an ephah for a bullock and an ephah for a ram. And a hen of oil for the ephah. You better give what God tells you to give. In the seventh month, in the fifteenth day of the month, shall ye do the like in the feast of the seven days. The feasts are coming back. According to the sin offering, according to the burnt offering, according to the meat offering, according to the oil. You know what that means? What God says to do, you do it you don't add and you don't subtract how's that and you don't give a baker's 13 to be sure god said a hen it's a hen how's that for being exact how's that for a god that tells you what to do you don't tell god what to do